Now, when we have fade transition finished, we are going to create another transition, so you get the feeling on how to create your future transitions. Also, in the next lecture, we will create one more transition, and you will have a better feeling on how to implement your future transitions. Now, let's go back to our JGA utils. Inside the impl package, we are going to create a new Java class. Superclass will be screen transition base. So screen transition base. Name will be scale screen transition. So scale screen transition. For this transition, we will need few attributes. So let's add attributes. First attribute will be Boolean. Is it scaling out or scaling in? So let's create private Boolean scale out. Then we need interpolation. In fade transition, we used fade interpolation, but for scale, you might want to use a different interpolation. So let's create private interpolation, interpolation. Let's create our constructors. So constructors, first constructor that we need will be constructor that accepts all parameters. So alt insert constructor and select both. This will automatically add duration and it will call super duration or our super constructor. Before we call super duration, we are going to validate that our interpolation is not null. So validate dot not null interpolation and you can put message interpolation is required or you can leave it without a message. Now we need two more constructors. So let's create first constructor public scale transition scale screen transition. This constructor will have only two parameters. So float duration and Boolean scale out. It will call the other constructor. So this duration scale out and for interpolation, we will use interpolation linear as default. Then we will create another constructor public scale screen transition. This constructor will just have duration parameter. And again, we will call the other constructor with duration and scale out as false. Now, first constructor is calling our second constructor and second constructor is calling our third constructor. So don't let this duration false to confuse you. This is just basic object oriented programming and calling the other constructor. Now let's go back to our render method and let's create the public methods section. So public methods, alt insert, implement methods, and we need to implement the render method. So for this, we will first interpolate our percentage. So let's add a little comment, interpolate percentage, interpolate percentage, percentage equals interpolation dot apply. So for this transition, we can use different interpolations because we can pass them through constructor. Apply on percentage. And now we will calculate the scale based on that percentage. So by default, we will assume that it is scale in. So let's add a little comment. Assume scale out is false, e.g scale scaling in. So float scale will be one multiplied by one minus percentage. If you take a look at this mathematical operation, we don't need one multiplied, we can just use one minus percentage. And that will give us the scale values from one going to zero because percentage goes from one to zero. Now we need to check if it is scale out, then we want to scale from zero to one. So we will just set the scale equals to percentage. Now we need to have a different drawing order. 
if we are scaling out then we want to draw the next screen texture first and if we are scaling in then we want to draw the current screen texture first so let's add a little comment drawing order depends depends on scale type is it in or out so texture top texture is equal to scale out if scale out is true then we will use the next screen texture otherwise we will use current screen texture another texture texture bottom texture will be if scale out is true then we want current screen texture to be our bottom texture otherwise we want the next screen texture to be our current texture and now we need to grab with its end heights so int top texture with it equals top texture top texture get with it int top texture height equals top texture get height int bottom texture with it is equal to bottom texture get with it int bottom texture height is equal to bottom texture get height now that we have dimensions of our textures it is time to draw the textures so let's add a little comment drawing gdx utils dot clear screen first we need to clear the screen then we need to call batch begin batch dot end and all the drawing in between so now first we are drawing the bottom texture if we are scaling out then the bottom texture will be the current screen and on top of the bottom texture we are going to draw the next screen so let's first draw the bottom texture batch dot draw bottom texture x and y zero zero origin x and origin y zero zero with it and height is bottom texture with it bottom texture height scale for bottom texture is one one rotation is zero src x and y is zero zero src with it and height is bottom texture with it bottom texture height flip x is false and flip y is true so that is all we need now you can notice how the scale is one one we are just going to scale the top texture so for example in your new effect you can rotate one of the textures or you can even scale and rotate the textures and so on you can even draw the portions of textures and create really nice effects now let's draw the top texture so i will just add comment bottom texture and now top texture batch dot draw top texture x and y is zero zero origin x and y is the center of top texture so top texture with it divided by two and top texture height divided by two we need to set the origin because the texture will be scaled around that point if we set origin to zero zero then the texture will be scaled around zero zero point or bottom left corner we want to scale it in the middle point or in the central point now the width it and height is top texture with it height is top texture height and scale x and scale y for top texture are the scale that we calculated with interpolation so scale comma scale the rest is the same so rotation is zero src x is zero src y is zero with it and height will be top texture with it top texture height flipping false for x and true for y and now our scale screen transition is completed so let's try it out inside the screen transitions class that is located in core package let's create our scale transition so public static final screen transition scale equals new screen transition new scale screen transition and let's put five 
by default it will be scaled out and it will use linear interpolation. Inside our menu screen, when we switch to the game screen, we are going to use scale screen transition and the same goes for our game screen when we switch back to menu screen. Let's set it to scale transition. And now let's run our game and see the scale transition in action. Since it is using the linear interpolation, later we will try different interpolations. So now when I press play, you will notice how the screen goes in the center and disappears and our game starts playing, which is really nice effect. It is true that it takes a bit too long. We can always change duration and now you can notice how slowly our game screen is going to center and we are back to the menu screen. So let's change the interpolation. Let's go to screen transitions scale and let's put, for example, 2F for the duration. Next parameter is scale out. So we will set it as true. So let's set true. And for example, interpolation, let's say bounce out. Now let's run our game again and see that we are scaling differently this time. Remember, we are we were scaling inside the screen. So now when I press play, before we had menu screen going in and now when I press play you will see that the game screen is coming out from the center and this bouncing at the end that was the bounce interpolation. So now again if we lose all lives the game will again go back to menu screen and you can see the menu screen slowly bouncing. Let's go back and revert this to 5 and put bounce in, for example. Let's leave true for the scaling. Now, when we run our game, it will be a lot slower. The transition will be slower. So let's press play and see how it will work this time. So now you can see how bouncing is working. It bounces slowly, slowly in. And now, when we lose lives, the menu screen will come from the center and it will bounce slowly, slowly in. So you can notice how nice effects we can create with this little screen transition API. You can try all different interpolations. So feel free to try different interpolations like elastic, elastic in, elastic out, there are many other interpolations, even swing. Let's try swing in, for example. Instead of bouncing, let's try swing in. These all these are different functions. And let's set the scale out to false, for example. So our screens scale from the center back to us. Run your game again. And now when we press play, you will notice how the screen slowly zooms in and then goes back to the center which is really nice effect. And as I already said, you can really achieve many nice effects with these screen interpolations. Now you can see the game is zooming out and going back inside the center of the screen. In the next lesson, we will create another transition effect and you will see the different transition effects. Let's just change this to 1.5 and I will leave it at 1.5. You can try different values for your game or different interpolations and see how different effects you can achieve with this simple interface and implementing one method. We can immediately after implementing the new screen transition, we can immediately use it inside our game and you can see how modular this code is.